Welcome back to GB Guns. We've got something that I've wanted to try for years from Lionheart Industries. So not your average packaging because it's not your average gun. And if you didn't notice, the uh, email address for customer care is, customer service is wecare at lionheartindustries.com. Very cool deal. So I first saw one of these, I believe it was a Military Arms Channel video a couple years ago and immediately liked how different it was. As you guys know, I like things that are different and wanted to get my hands on one. And then, well, it didn't happen until now. So you can see the gun comes in its own bag with nice ready pull zippers and a velcro spot, good place for a GB Guns patch would be my suggestion for it. You know, like maybe slap that guy on there like that. Looks pretty good. And let's see what comes inside. Now I do have an extra set of mags. Lionheart knows how we do our multi-load tests and so offered up spare mags. We've got some nice, beautiful steel mags. These are 13 rounders. And this one by Metgar is a 15 rounder. So 15 and a 13 is what you normally get. We've got our all-purpose brush. Looks like the rest of the cleaning kit is in there. Bronze brush in a little container so it doesn't get all gnarled up and tangled in things. It stays nice and clean. Little spot for lube. Place for lock. Up top, we've got a Velcro spot here with some blank tapes that can easily be named. You know, take them to an embroidery shop and have them done. If you're wondering why this is so complete, well, that's because the LH-9, what we'll be looking at in a second here, is actually a service gun in Korea. Let's take a look at the manuals here. There's your basic notifications that have to come. A QR code, I've never seen that in a manual. Tech specs. Wow, look at that. Nice, big, easy to see, easy to read. This is really just a, this is more of a poster than anything. Let's take a look at the back side. Oh, we've got more information here on use. Very creative, very cool, different kind of manual. Or a different kind of gun and I know I keep saying that and you guys are probably wondering like all right so Graham what's what is different about this thing well uh, similar to my favorite gun the Walther P99 the Lionheart LH9 has three trigger modes came sealed in this bag there she is we get the bag out of the way and let's take a look at this thing so the Lionheart LH9, this thing is unique in a few ways. First looking at it, you can tell there's kind of a little bit of Browning high power, a little bit of 1911, uh, a little bit of a lot of things blended into this design. What's different about it though, aside from that, is three trigger modes. That's right, three. So single action, take up to a wall, very clean break. Now hammer down, we're in double action. Consistent weight all the way through, no stacking. It breaks all the way at the end with probably zero over travel, for those of you that are concerned about that. Of course, this means you can carry it uh, hammered down if you want to say, load around and then gently lower that hammer, but that's risky. You can carry it cocked and locked. Safety is down, which makes sense for gripping. Very similar to a 1911. Nice and adequately sized. Or you can carry double action plus, which is pushing the hammer forward. You see the trigger move back forward there. Now you've got a long pull, but it's the same weight as a single action. And watch what happens. Pull through here. Takes me right back to that break, nice and crisp. So that's a uh, third option, which is pretty neat. 
enough with explaining that part. Let's do our traditional walk around the gun. Take a look at the front. So we've got a stainless barrel, a little bit of side to side. Nice recess here to blend to the dust cover. Front cog considerations for doing a press check. Looking at the top of the slide, we've got these neat serrations here that helps fight against glare. Also adds some very nice style. No rail spot. A little bit of a recess on the trigger guard here. That's supportive of the people who like to do the second finger up front there. Trigger guard does swing down nice and wide and it's rounded a little bit through here. I've got very large hands, so I do have some contact on that far side. Magazine release. Sticks out just a little bit, just enough so you can catch it. Let's see if we get release or ejection. We get ejection. We also have, you notice, a little cutout there at the bottom to strip if need do. So if the mag doesn't pop out, you can so you get stuck, you can get a finger in there and rip it out, which is nice. We've got serrations on the front strap. These grips are plastic with an interesting diamond pattern that adds a lot of texture. It's really nice. Slide release, slide lock is within reach. So rear serrations for safety. Coming around the back side, we have some vertical serrations. Slide to frame fit, a little bit of play. Probably means for great reliability. And Novak style sights with the white dot up front and black up back. On the right side, we do have our safety once again. Good looking gun. Next we'll field strip it and take a look inside the gun. And I'll talk some more about this design. So field stripping the Lionheart is not unlike many other guns. You want to uh, hammer back this, the instruction manual says to actually have the safety on as well. And you're gonna make sure it's clear. Then we're gonna pull the slide back until this notch is over there, which is where a pin is. It's pushed out right there on that side. So we've come back to about here. See that alignment? Push on the pin. There we go. And the pin comes out. Slide should come straight off. We have an uncaptured recoil spring on a steel guide rod. And then our barrel comes out. You might have noticed on the slide here, it says made in Korea. Come on camera, keep with us. That's because the Lionheart is actually a Daewoo, a South Korean military pistol that they have been importing. Done a few touch-ups to it. For example, this alloy frame is Cerakoted, which gives it a nice feel and finish. Take a look inside our slide. Very clean machining. No tool marks. Everything look good, looks good in there. Taking a look at the frame. The frame is aluminum, which helps keep the weight down, but still give you some heft. And all the magic of that multiple hammer system is safely secured inside. I bet if we pulled the grips off, we could see a little more in there. Our barrel. Interesting blend of polished and non. You can see it's got a little bit of a bushing type system built in with that shape there on the end of the barrel. Same thing Ruger does on some of their guns. But we have locking lugs like the 1911. Nice polished feed ramp. For information on the rifling, etc., see the article, which of course accompanies this video as do all of my videos. So uh, now, as always, to check chamber fit, we'll use some Nauser match grade ammunition because we know that the sizes are right. 
and you can see we've got full chamber support all the way around which is excellent there's a lot of pride that goes into these guns both on the Korean side and the American side and uh, I know some other things that I'm not sure if I can share with you yet uh, exciting news coming from this company which is part of why I'm excited to finally get my hands on one of their guns reassembly of course is just going to be a reversal of disassembly so used by the Korean military and some of you might be wanting to see something along the lines of, well, who cares about the Korean military? Well, you got to think about something. They are a country who has been at continuous war for decades and continuous threat for decades. So I would assume that a firearm they make would be serious. Also, Daewoo is an industrial giant. From fighter jets to TV sets, they make everything. So... I skipped a step that I saw in the manual, and this is an excellent illustration as to why. Get this back apart. And I need to make sure that something is set down. Just a moment. All right, I'm going to be honest with you, and everyone can have a good laugh. The reason why I had the issue, everything was put back correctly. However, the safety was still on, and this safety gives you a dead trigger instead of a wall. Since I'm not used to that, that's why I screwed the trigger, felt that something was wrong. Now we're good. Just being totally honest with you guys. So as I was saying, Korean military uses this and uh, I fell in love with it when I saw Military Arms Channel shoot it years ago. Excited to finally have the opportunity to, to try it especially with the trigger and I didn't show you reset earlier so it's audible not so tactile it takes you to just in front of the wall where it breaks again we'll get it out to the range for of course our full mag plus one and then complete load compatibility testing running uh, as heavy as we've got up to 165 grain down to 65 grain if I can find some more and then, of course, for grouping five shots from seven yards, using that Nosler match to see how it does. Excited to give this one a try. A question that a lot of you have had with some of these less common or lesser known guns has been about holsters. And what if you fall in love with one? What can you do about it? Well, I asked Lionheart about that, and they sent this holster. It comes from K Rounds. Uh, made in the USA by hand. I hadn't heard of this company before, so I looked on the back and they're from Tukwila, Washington, which is not too far from me, a couple hours drive, whatnot. But to take a look at this holster, it is Kydex, but they've given it some extra attention. You notice all the edges have been smooth and softened, so there aren't any sh sharp edges on this, which is awesome. Those of you that have used Kydex holsters in the past, probably know what I'm talking about when you get a sharp edge. This is of course an outside the waistband. What uh, I intend to do with it is see what uh, my groups and times are like if I pull it out of the holster cocked and locked versus on that double single action to see how it shoots how it works for my hand size and my skill level now that's a very subjective test but I think it will give you guys an idea as to why the two would exist there I would imagine also IDPA folks would be excited you know they ask you to either put uh, hammer down or safety on or decock I wonder and some of you might be able to know because I haven't competed in a couple years doing that would that satisfy the safeties at your range so that the next time you pull out you have that quick double action plus that you get with the Lionheart. Let me know in the comments below. I'll get this out to the range. Thanks for watching.